My name is Richard McCarthy. I'm a Kuma Camilleroy Maori. I work for Gundi Health Service. It's a it's an Aboriginal com community controlled health service. At the moment, I'm a qualified counsellor. I'm a social emotional wellbeing counsellor. I'm also a a qualified Aboriginal health worker, I've got my cert three there, and I'm at doing transport at the moment. One of the main reasons I, you know, I do my job is because you know the my life before I actually started, you know, working for Gundy and what I used to do. So I can actually help make a difference in someone's life. I did a um, certificate for an alcohol and other drugs, and I did. Ended up doing that because when I was 14, I started drinking alcohol. Um, I got addicted to it pretty quickly. I was addicted to it for about 28 years. I'm married now, and, and it's my second marriage. My first marriage broke down because of that. I, I was married. We we had a we bought a house. And we, you know, I've got two beautiful children, and and I lost all those stuff through. Um, using alcohol. I know, having lived that, how devastating it can be and how difficult it is to actually change. Well, before I got out of rehab, I was actually talking to one of the counsellors there about stuff and, and you know, I, I was feeling a lot better and, and said I'd like to be able to do something, you know, to help people as well. And he actually suggested I do the Cert 4 in AOD. Uh, I enrolled before I actually got out of rehab. I started that course. I completed it. I went from from there, and I was applying for jobs all over the place. And I got the job at at Gundy, and and while I've been at Gundy, uh, I've done my Cert three in you know Aboriginal primary health care, and I also did my diploma of counselling on the recommendation of my um, supervisor there. So having, you know, had that journey through my life, it's uh, one of the, probably the biggest motivator of me being able to help other people. Uh, as long as I know that I've helped one person, even through the whole time, help them get better, get over whatever it is that they're going through, um, makes me feel better. And being able to do that keeps me getting up to go to work to do my job every day. Never give up on your dreams. If, if you've got a dream, um, the only way you're going to actually make it come true is to keep going at it. I think if you just don't give up. If you haven't got persistence, you won't. They won't come true. You know. So the only way to make your dreams come true is to actually keep going. Keep keep at them. My name's Megan Dar. I'm a descendant of the Mardigan people um, and also of the Nipika people. And my job title is the um, project manager for DARE, which is Dream Aspire Reach Experience Indigenous Secondary School Mentoring Program at the University of Southern Queensland. The reason I'm here today and the reason I work um, on the DARE program is life experiences have led me here. I believe there has been significant events within my life that has led me on this path. I started off life in a very difficult background, um, family history. Grew up s surrounded by drugs and alcohol. Um, my mother was a victim of domestic violence and therefore myself and my siblings were also a part of that lifestyle. We saw a lot of horrible things that I guess Indigenous people are still um, portrayed that way through our childhood and uh, it wasn't until 
my mother left my father at when I was 12 and we moved here to Oki that I was able to step back from I guess that history and, and those situations of violence and um, drug and alcohol and look at it in a different perspective and um, I was fortunate that growing up here in Oki put me in place of a lot of really strong role models. Those lessons very early on in life have led me to here. Um, leaving school and feeling a bit stronger about myself, I was able to participate in a lot of programs at school based around culture. Um, so I was definitely feeling very strong about who I, who I am. What sparked an interest in this program and applying for this position was it seemed to fit in with my life's journey in that um, the program is designed around helping young Indigenous people feel stronger about themselves and to succeed in life, um, to succeed in education. And I believe that the lessons that I've learned, I've been, at, been able to share um, my journey in order to have, have our kids feel a lot stronger and more confident in their own abilities. A lot of our kids are subjected to domestic violence and drugs and alcohol. Uh, a lot of our Mar young Murray kids um, don't feel confident, don't know who they, who they are as um, contemporary Aboriginal people and what it actually means for them to be Aboriginal now in this century um, and to also understand the journey of our elders before us to have the, have the rights that we have today as ind Indigenous people. Myself having a bit of a background in um, working with secondary school students, thought this as an opportunity. So the first year of the program and the position was the development stage. So I spent a year looking at uh, what, where the gaps are in education for our young people. I wanted to achieve an increase in literacy and numeracy for our young people. So that was a main focus of ours was literacy and numeracy. It was to develop cultural understanding and appreciation, not only for our young people, but for also the wider community. Our other goal is promoting healthy lifestyles. So within the program, we have our traditional indigenous games. We uh, look at um, bullying, cyberbullying, drugs and alcohol. Our target group is year 10 students because that's where we start seeing the drop off. For all of our kids to have a positive start in life after school is, is um, I guess, our main focus in what we're doing. I think the most important thing is to be, um, be willing to share stories. We keep asking the questions, we keep learning as much as we can about um, our Indigenous heritage and be proud of not only um, our amazing customs and traditions but the struggles that have been fought and won, you know, so it's really important that we spend time with our family and ask questions and ask our aunties and our grandparents and, um, you know, our great aunties to tell their stories so we can keep, keep it all alive and keep moving it forward. My name's Henry Cora. My people are Wadji Wadji people, uh, Warabinda. Uh, my great grandfather is Henry Cora, he's a Kanakakan, and my great grandmother is Moira Freeman. And I grew up in Woodridge, and I'm out here in Oki working on the Gundir Mobile Medical Clinic as a registered nurse, uh, bringing the skills from the city out to the people in the country to look after um, the Indigenous people out here. I initially had training in Brisbane. I spent six years working in the biggest hospitals in Brisbane and I wanted to bring those skills back out into the people. Uh, best training and what keeps me out here is the people and I've got family here, I've got nieces and nephews. I was a teacher before I became a nurse 
I used to teach at um, Southern Queensland Institute of TAFE. I used to teach business administration, and and then I had a bit of epiphany and decided to become a nurse. And I've been doing it ever since. I went to university, worked full time, put myself through university, and haven't looked back since. The primary healthcare is really important. If you want to prevent chronic diseases and to to close the gap, the the life expectancy gap, you need to focus on primary health care. You need to tackle things from ground up. You don't you don't look after people when they get to the hospital as a first priority. You look you look after them from a GP level and you touch base with them as a community member and you prevent them from going to hospital. That's what primary health care is. We started in February. So we've been here for a few months and we're working on a new building in the main street and we will be here permanently and we should be up and running within a couple of months. Love each other. Um, and uh, it's all about family. Look after your family. If you have a goal, go for it. Um, if you don't quite reach exactly where you want to be, at least you gave it a shot and you're better off than what you were before you started. So give it a go.